Good day, everyone. Thanks for joining the MIPI Alliance webinar, Beyond Sensors, What's New in MIPI I3C V1.1. So today's webinar will be presented by Ken Faust of Intel Corporation. Ken is also the chair of the MIPI I3C Working Group. Just a few things to note before we start the session. All of the telephone lines have been muted upon entry and we are recording this session. It will become available by the end of the day today in the MIPI Alliance Knowledge Library. We're planning to run the session for 60 minutes, approximately 45 minutes will be a presentation and we'll then go into a Q&A session. And for the Q&A session, you can ask questions to Ken in a variety of different ways. You can type them in the chat window or you can also type them in the Q&A window. You can also raise your hand in the chat window and I can unmute your line so that you can verbally ask questions. So with that, I'd like to introduce Peter Lefkin, Managing Director of MIPI Alliance. He'll provide a brief overview and then we'll go into the presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Dervla, and I'd like to welcome everybody to this uh, webinar. There was a lot of interest in this webinar, um, so I'll, I'll uh, move forward to uh, be able to focus on the, the content of the presentation. If you're able to move forward, Ken, uh, to the next few slides. Um, yeah, so uh, as Dervla mentioned, uh, I'll give a brief introduction to the MIPI Alliance, a um, few slides, and then leave the, the bulk of the agenda to Ken uh, Faust, who's the chair of the MIPI I3C working group um, to give an update on what's new in MIPI I3C V1.1. Next slide. Next slide after that. So uh, just as very brief background, I won't go through all the uh, history of the 15, now 16 years uh, since MIPI was formed, but MIPI Alliance was formed to standardize uh, initially camera and display interfaces. And that was really what started MIPI Alliance was the need to uh, standardize uh, camera sensors in mobile devices uh, around the introduction of cameras in mobile phones where there were no standard interfaces at that time and each camera sensor and semiconductor and uh, vendor as well as the uh, device manufacturers all had to kind of work individually one-to-one -one in order to implement it uh, implement cameras in mobile phones without uh, a uh, standard interface and MIPI Alliance, uh, it was realized that in order to scale um, to the levels that we are, certainly never anticipated maybe uh, where we are today, but um, in order to scale the market, uh, lower cost, there was a need for a uh, standard interface for camera and display. And these are two of our uh, more widely adopted specifications even today. Next slide. The the MIPI ecosystem has, has grown over time and, and really the uh, founding members of the Alliance, I would say, were the application processor de uh, developers, the device OEMs, uh, as well as the semiconductor companies. So those, those three parts of the ecosystem really made up the foundation. As MIPI Alliance developed uh, our specifications, they were implemented in products in the marketplace, a whole ecosystem uh, grew around MIPI uh, and MIPI implementations, including test equipment companies, test labs, software providers, uh, consumer electronics companies who were leveraging uh, the uh, mobile explosion as well as you know the standardization in mobile IP and VIP providers, uh, very important component of, of the MIPI ecosystem, as well as uh, today we're seeing a number of automotive OEMs and tier one suppliers leveraging what MIPI has done for mobile into automotive um, and so as of the end of last year uh, we ended the year with 339 members in, in 27 countries. Next slide. With MIPI specifications and over the course of the 16 years, um, a lot of our development is focused on high speed, um, low EMI, as well as, um, you know, implementing in mobile and, and, and once we low power uh, being implemented in mobile and, and once we developed that we recognized that if we were able to solve it for mobile 
our MIPI members were leveraging their investments in other industries as well beyond mobile. So automotive, industrial, uh, heads up display, um, avionics industry as well, medical, IoT. Um, and so those industries are leveraging MIPI specifications in ways that we had never uh, anticipated. And one of the things that we did last year um, to accommodate that uh, more widely and um, very specifically was to enable royalty-free implementation of MIPI specifications regardless of the application area. It used to be only royalty-free in mobile, and now it's royalty-free regardless of the implementation for MIPI members. Um, you can see to the left, uh, we have a large number of specifications that now that mobile system diagram is really representative of the mobile architecture. We have other system diagrams for other application areas as well. Um, but Ken, Ken today is going to focus on the uh, upper right-hand portion of that system diagram. We have other webinars that are focused on you know, other portions and other specifications, and hopefully you'll uh, 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 pique your interest in, and attend those. But uh, right now, I'd like to hand it back to Ken Faust, uh, who will take you through the rest of the webinar. And again, thank you for your participation. Uh, this was a uh, a widely registered uh, event across the globe, and, and we appreciate your interest. Go ahead, Ken. Thanks. Great. Great. Thanks, Peter. And, and thanks, Dervla, um, as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm uh, Ken Fals, a principal engineer at, at Intel, and I'm honored today on behalf of uh, the MIPI Alliance uh, to, to, to talk about the, the great work um, that uh, the um, I3C working group um contributors have done over the past uh really three years um to to uh evolve uh MIPI i3c um from uh you know v1.0 to v v1.1 so um it's it it was a great great effort and i am really honored uh to to be able to speak to it on behalf of all of those great contributors but just in case uh, you're, uh, you know, rather new to um, uh, I3C, just in general, um, let, let's talk a little bit uh, about, you know, what what it is in, uh, you know, in its 1.0 form, even just just kind of in in, in sim simple terms. Um, it's a innovative two uh, two wire interface uh, for sensing and beyond. Um, I'll talk about this a little more, but we did uh, start with. You know, really, um, you know, at the beginning, how can we more efficiently connect sensors to, to mobile devices, knowing that if we, uh, you know, develop the technology correctly, um, it, 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 you know, would have, uh, you know, broad appeal and, and could be used in, a, in broad use cases. Uh, but really to, um, you know, differentiate I3C from the, you know, incumbent interfaces, um, we, we felt it was really important to address key uh, historical pain points, and these were you know, pain, pain points that uh, you know many of us uh, that either were developing sensors for the mobile industry, or were were developing uh, mobile devices themselves, or subsystems inside um, uh, mobile devices, or host processors, etc. There, there were pain points. Um, that, that you know we had been living with with the incumbent interfaces and thought that if we brought some features such as in-band interrupt, dynamic addressing capability, multi-mastership, uh, standardized commands, uh, some t uh, timing control, um, you know, uh, hot join, error detection, recovery, um, you know, we uh, could really move those uh, you know old incumbent interconnects into the 21st century. Uh, but we didn't stop there, um, you know, with I3C v, v1.0, um, you know, we uh, moved forward uh, and ensured we maintained I squared C backwards compatibility so that uh, I squared, you know, legacy I squared C devices, uh, uh, the gray box here, can coexist with different um, uh, Kind of different categories of I3C devices that could just be kind of your simplest form of I3C device or or a smarter I3C device that uh, you know may may also want to be uh, you know a master uh, of the bus at at times. 
Um, we also wanted to, uh, you know, put, put forth an, an interface here that was uh, more efficient. So, uh, so, so lower power compared to compared to the incumbents, uh, such as um, in, in this case, uh, I, I squared C. So you can see the significant ener energy efficiency um, of I3C V1.0 in its uh, in its various modes of operation while also achieving much higher data rates um, for uh, you know, the, those uh, devices that wanted to just do more than, than let's say command and control or, or uh, be, that needed to be commanded or controlled, but also could, could uh, stream uh, large amounts of data. Perhaps it was, uh, it's a sensor that's buffering data and that, that buffer needed to be unloaded. So if we did this correctly um, with I3C, um, you know, it, it would be ubiquitous. So, so anywhere sensors are used, we, we feel I3C belongs. And, but, but, you know, we've had larger ambitions that, than that and, are, and have looked at applications ranging well beyond, um, you know, the mobile uh, phone device, um, whether it's, uh, you know, VR or AR. Um, wearables, all of the various Internet of Things, things, um, automotive, and uh, you know, server and data center um, as well. Uh, so Peter had had talked a little bit about the mobile diagram. Um, you know, this is where where we are and what we're discussing. You know, with uh, you know within in phones, so connecting sensors and sensor hubs. Uh, directly to application processors or sensors to sensor hubs. Um, you know, I3C, uh, uh, kind of an emerging use case for I3C, and I'll talk about it more later, is for touch, as well as uh, uh, camera control. So I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So I3C, um, you know, is a, is a bit, bit special. Um, you know, we work really hard to ensure that it's an interconnect that can sit on top of standard uh, CMOS IO. We did not want, um, you know, very uh, special physical layer beyond that, that which we would be used for the incumbent interconnects like I squared C or, or SPY. Um, and, and of course, it, uh, it uh, includes a, a protocol layer definition. So, what was our original vision? Well, um, this this was uh, uh, many many years ago, two thousand and uh, let's say twelve uh, t time frame. Um, people were integrating sensor capabilities into devices such as mobile phones, and they were connected over uh, a fragmented set of interfaces: I squared C, um, you know, SPI, U, uh, UART. Um, <coughs> And they were using, um, you know, a lot of sideband um, IO um, for things such as, uh, you know, sending sleep and sleep commands, as well as um, uh, interrupts, uh, et cetera. So we dared have a vision where maybe all of these could literally just be uh, connected to a single two-wire bus consuming uh, only two pins on whatever the host uh, processor is, um, therefore freeing up a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of pins on the host processor to do other things. We feel we've achieved that with the capabilities I've, I've described between being compatible with I2C, um, adding and ban interrupt, uh, common command codes, et cetera. So what's the current status? Well, um, I3C uh, v1.1, which we're going to go into more detail with, uh, is is now released. So um, that was uh, uh, it became available at, at the, the start of tw 2020, after about three years uh, of development. Um, I3C v1.0, which you know 1.1 is completely compatible with, is is uh, through that time has matured greatly. Um, we've confirmed interoperability via mul multiple MIPI sponsored plug fests, um, and these have been international plug fests um, uh, hosted in North America, Europe, and Asia. 
multiple occasions. There's master and slave IP available from all the major IP providers, as well as test analysis um, equipment. Uh, MIPI, uh, you know, uh, has somewhat recently moved into uh, the software realm and, just, and so standardized a host controller interface. Um, uh, so called the uh, I3C HCI. Um, V1.1 is available, but, uh, uh, you know, kind of in alignment with I3C V1.1 and HCI V1.1 um, is also coming. There is uh, inbox um, Linux kernel support now for an I3C subsystem. Um, we consider I3C to be 5G ready. Um, given the great uh, technical advancements uh, that, that, that it brings to a uh, subsystem such as a sensor subsystem, and we're planning interoperability workshops for um, I I3C v1.1 as those, as those new capabilities built on top of v1.0, uh, um, you know, become implemented in its various forms and, uh, you know, master and slave devices want to So a big part of um, you know evolving I3C forward um, beyond um, B1.0 was looking at you know, capabilities uh, you know for usages beyond the mobile industry, um, such as the Internet of uh, Internet of Things, where it's used as an efficient way to connect sensors to to SOCs, uh, high performance computing and servers. Um, so we're driving liaisons to an to ensure, um, you know, I3C is adopted in those use cases uh, while trying to shunt, you know, fragmentation. Um, that's an area that is, I think, right, right for um, uh, innovation. And so, uh, if he's, uh, I think, working hard to, to steer people towards I3C there, and and um, automotive um, as well. So let's discuss automotive uh, challenges real quick. On the next slide, so to kind of high high level, um, we see a co couple opportunities for for I three C in, in automotive. So I've included this uh, a, a MIPI diagram on the right here, which which is from an available white paper um, from MIPI called "Driving the Wires of Automotive." It's available for download on the on the MIPI website, and um, and not not surprising. Um, you know, there, there are um, a few ways that I3C um, uh, can, can be applied in automotive. Um, one for, um, you know, I think a common use, use case for I3C is control and manageability. In this case, it, it, could, it would be for uh, a camera module. So, so I'll, I'll talk about this a, a little bit more um, in, in another slide, but um, where, uh, you know, you you will have a high speed pipeline coming out of the camera with the imaging data. You you also need a a sideband, uh, simpler, lower speed and and bidirectional interconnect to manage and control that camera to 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 you know, turn on or off the flow of data to configure the camera, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's a role um, that I3C can play, as well as for just a uh, you know, typical uh, sensor data transport. So we, uh, you know, definitely think initially uh, because of how I3C is is designed from a, a, a physical standpoint um, that it, it is a natural fit for connecting uh, sensors inside a module to uh, microcontrollers or, or SOCs or uh, processors um, in, inside a, a module um, where, you know, an I squared C or, or um, uh, SPI would be used. So there are challenges, of course, um, uh, the with uh, you know bringing a technology into automotive that that we of course have uh, you know on my, on our minds: uh, functional safety, reliability, security, EMI, EMC, and then also um, there is interest in, in long reach. So you know, can I three C um, come outside of of a module and drive longer distances. That's something we've uh, we continue to look at. Uh, 
<laughs> but we're also, um, you know, as I alluded to, not only looking, um, you know, be, uh, beyond mobile, but also beyond just sensing as part of the charter for the working group, uh, we carry a responsibility to ensure that I3C maintains a relevant uh, feature set and, and scope. And, and we do that by, by constantly looking, looking outside, looking at adjacent, uh, you know, um, areas to sensing and, and, and mobile. And so there are a few notable uh, ones uh, that, that have come about. So uh, I, I touched on camera control interface, uh, touch over I3C, debug, and um, system manageability. So, so um, just quickly, I want to talk about three, three uh, you know, applications that have come out of uh, uh, MIPI collaborations. Uh, one is, uh, you know, MIPI camera control interface um, over I3C offering a faster, lower latency, more efficient camera control with future abilities uh, to support um, uh, group data, right? And um, I think uh, uh, even more compelling, always on imaging. So the ability to to send uh, uh, low pixel count, lower frame rate uh, imaging data over over this uh, you know sideband interface um, to to uh, save energy. Uh, touch so touch screen controller interface has been fragmented. Um, and, you know, we've, we found that I3C presents, uh, you know, I think a good con converged option for, uh, pro definitely for process data and some raw touch data, um, depending on, uh, you know, the pixel density, um, and, uh, and, you know, the bringing the value of in-band interrupt and, in, in the HDR modes. And, and then, um, you know, even uh, I think more recent uh, debug for I3C. So offering a more complete closed chassis and scalable and power aware uh, platform debug capability um, with, uh, you know, minimized uh, count um, is is emerging as well. So these all are um, MIPI activities. I advise or recommend um, checking them out, even even if it's just going to the MIPI website and, and seeing what's available. So uh, another new one uh, is uh, sy system manageability. So you can en envision kind of a this arbitrary compute system. Maybe it's a high performance computer, a server, um, whatever, um, wh where there are, where there are um, ma many components either on board or 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 through a connector um, that need to be need to be managed, need to be monitored, um, need to be controlled, um, et, et, et cetera. And that's an, and this is uh, an, another uh, subsystem which is pretty fragmented. So um, there there may be multiple um, physical interfaces that these are these are connected to for multiple reasons. Uh, maybe it's for for uh, efficiency. Maybe it's for 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 bandwidth. But eventually, um, they're they're bound bound together in the, in the stack and kind of abstracted. And so, um, you know, I three C with its with its benefits of of higher speed, um, in band interrupt, dynamic addressing, et cetera, um, could, you know, could relatively simply be be adopted for for, for such a role um, via sim simple binding spec. So this is um, something I think uh, technically I three C is positioned pretty well for um, in in uh, in v one dot one. And we can, um, you know, through through liaisons we have in place, um, we can achieve that. Uh, so, so one last thing, uh, you know, before I really do jump into one dot one, uh, I just wanted to paint the picture of how how this all, you know, all came about over the years, and and uh, you know, all the parallel efforts that, that have been going on. Of course, it started with forming the, the working group uh, back then. We were called the sensor working group. 2013, and we developed V1.1, which hopefully folks are familiar with. 2017, we started uh, really, uh, you know, parallel efforts of of developing support collateral um, and interop workshops and developer conferences, etc. For 1.0, while also developing uh, V1.1. So it was a, a, a three-year effort. You'll see uh, there's significant features that we've added. Um, for, for 
for 1.1, but uh, you know, have maintained compatibility and coexistence. And we've also established some key um, industry liaisons, uh, you know, with JEDEC, uh, working um, with them on DDR5, um, uh, zero presence detect. Um, so the si sideband interconnect for, for, for DDR5, DMTF, um, we're working with on the uh, manageability uh, protocol uh, from the previous slide. Um, uh, Visa, there's also USBIF um, and a few others that are that are uh, emerging. Um, we, we also uh, developed what's called a MIPI uh, I3C basic V1.0 to reduce feature set, uh, you know, RAN Z uh, ver version of, of I3C V1.0. So we continue to drive it forward. Uh, we support our eco ecosystem. Um, we're, you know, very much focused on not just mobile features, but mobile influence features, and and uh, really curating uh, and you know and developing uh, industry liaisons. So let's get into uh, uh, the nitty gritty here of <laughs> of 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 uh, v one dot one and and I you know I built this this table to just. E even from from a distance to to show you um, really the amount of work um, that that went into um, i three c v one dot one so um, here these are all of the key features that i three c uh, offers from you know, the very basic sdr capability or um, you know, uh, i guess core sdr capability. Um, an in-band interrupt and dynamic addressing and secondary master um, and, and uh, the, the HDR modes to um, all of the new features here that were added um, for, for V1.1. V um, between adding a new, a new HDR mode, a reset capability, um, a kind of simpler way to assign Dynamic addresses. If you if you have a fixed network, um, where everything um, you know already has a fixed address, you can just send a command. Um, grouped addressing, um, so the ability to uh, you know not only have to let devices have unique addresses, or have all of them be uh, sent a message through a broadcast, but also to segment them um, uh, and uh, so, so you can you can address just a sub subset of them as well. Um, device to device is tunneling, uh, so the ability to um, either have slave initiated initiated transport of payloads from one slave to the next without that without that slave having to have. Uh, you know, full master capability, or even the ability to, to, to drive the clock, or also the master's uh, initiated way to tell slave A that, um, you know, it needs to read data and it's tended to be consumed by slave B and slave A and B, again, they don't have to be, um, you know, fully master capable device. A multi-lane for uh, for speed, which I'll talk about more in detail, and then uh, monitoring device uh, early termination. So, um, you know, th th this is this is a way to um, you know, allow for devices which could have high priority data um, to to effectively interrupt um, the traffic on the bus while while it is busy. So you could be yeah, um, you know, maybe the master has a task scheduled to go out and unload a buff, you know, a large buffer worth of data from one device, but another device generates needs to generate an asynchronous interrupt. Um, that device can be configured to, uh, you know, at defined moments in the transport to to uh, signal in band, right? Not through an out of out of band uh, I/O. Um, that it has its data, and then the master can decide what's more important. Do I finish, you know, finish unloading this buffer? You know, do I, um, you know, go, go service that device or whatnot? But it it helps with when you uh, when you take interrupt capability 
and you bring it in band, um, of course, you, you, there, there are times in the system where you would be concerned with start. So I adopt I3C V1.1 with all of these great features. Um, well, if we ignore the great features, um, you'll find if, if you've been a, a, at all a, an implementer of V1.0 or a student of it, um, that 1.1 is a, is a, is a, a better writ, written document. Um, you know, we, there, there was great mounting pressure on I3C V1.0 um, to, to, to bring it to, to the market. And, um, you know, I think we, as a working group, did the best we can and, and clearly specifying the capabilities, but there certainly were some areas um, where that, that based on our inner, based on, um, you know, feedback from our workshops, for instance, um, that, that we could uh, more clearly specify. And, and, um, and so we really went through the document and, and had done that. Um, we're offering, uh, you know, we're bringing higher speeds um and more efficiency through multi-lane and and also introducing a new hdr mode um hdr bt um i'll talk a bit a little bit more about this one on on uh, these on the next slide um but as you can see um with uh the the addition of dual and quad lane um now i3c is uh you know available in the effective uh you know 100 approximately 100 megabit per second uh, range um, when running up through quad lane. We've added a configurable pattern-based uh, slave reset th that I'll talk about, which uses, uh, you know, as, as opposed to a timeout, which would require all devices to have some timekeeping um, to, to do that. Um, this is just, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, a pin toggling based reset. Um, so where, you know, SCL is after it's uh, configured, um, uh, properly configured with SCL, SCL held low, um, 14 you know, transitions on, on uh, SDA, um, repeat start and stop, resets uh, the devices on the bus, and it's an intelligent reset as well. Um, and then I talked about um, you know, the, the goodness of, of, of the other capabilities. Um, such as uh, grouped addressing and, and device to devices tunneling, but also um, you'll find that multi multi mastership via our secondary master uh, device that de definition or capability definition um, is much more is much more comprehensive and 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 much more uh, thorough in not only in how it's specified but also in how those devices are configured and how those devices interact with all of the other features um, supported by I3C. So higher speeds. Um, so, you know, we're, we're achieving that through, as I mentioned, um, you know, continuing to um, add new HDR modes while also supporting multiple lanes. And so, so in V1.1, you'll find that multi-lane is supported for all, for all modes, so SDR, DDR, uh, TSP, and and uh, the new HDR mode uh, BT employs additional physical wires for faster payload transfer. So you would uh, you know, bring in uh, additional SDA lines with the you know single clock use, so single S. CL line. It's coexistent with the normal two wire operation. So frame format, sequencing, and timing is consistent with, with I3C. And uh, it's there's a standardized configuration through common command codes as well as link test. I, I'll call it link testing. Um, but uh, as you'll see in the um, in the specification when you uh, configure devices for for multi-lane operation. There's uh, there there's um, a standardized uh, part part of of the flow where the master tests, in fact, that uh, the, the slave can actively drive the new lanes which are enabled um, before you completely commit to handing over to multi-lane. Um, the new HDR mode, bulk transport, gives a highest uh, throughput using a clock and data DDR transmission. 
model. So you still have a clock line and a data line or multiple data lines if you're implementing the multi-lane version of it. And it's it's DDR based, um, as I mentioned, supporting single dual and quad lanes. It's built on, um, you know, it, it is built on our standardized HDR modality. So it is entered via, you know, an, the enter HDR CCC and it's exited or restarted via this, this, the um, uh, HDR uh, exit or re restart patterns. And it's very feature rich. So it's for CRC 16 or 32. Um, slaves can drive uh, drive the clock on, on read if needed. There's command uh, command and control is decoupled from, from data as a, and it supports a wide uh, data block model. Um, but the the last data block um, can be ragged, so it doesn't have to be completely 32 bytes, but it really is most efficient when you're transporting uh, bulk blocks of data, so large blocks of data. So slave, slave reset, as I mentioned, this is in-band uh, pattern-based slave reset um, via you know toggling of SDA while, while SCL is low. It is not a time-based reset, so it allows different levels of reset, of one or more selective slaves while avoiding reset of others. So, so you know, part of the pattern or the, the uh, uh, preamble, I'll, I'll, I'll say, uh, of the pattern is configuring um, the device, uh, you know, devices uh, for reset or not reset, et cetera. And it's not only the, the device or devices you want to or don't want to reset, but also the, the type of reset um, that you, you would like to do. So, so there's different levels of reset. Um, for instance, the default um, through the reset X CCC is a peripheral reset of the of the i3c peripheral so just of the i you know the i3c block let's say inside the device but it can be a whole device reset um it's you know really uh really flexible there it's it's uh anticipated to to enhance our error escalation recovery um and then you know as i as i mentioned uh, each, you know each slave reacts uh to the pattern in in its own ways as you know as configured and and as 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 manufactured, and it's coexistent with um, all uh, I three C V one dot one. So in the last few minutes here, um, I just wanted to talk about then what what's next, um, perhaps for I three C. Oop, type typo right there. <laughs> um, uh, so the um, working group is uh, ramping up discussion on the next uh, kind of evolution of, of I3C. So we have a face-to-face -face, uh, in, in, in March uh, in, in Boston, where of course that will be on the agenda. Considering multiple capabilities uh, or, or improvements, uh, such as long reach capability, um, spe specification development improvements, three years was a long time, um, or you know, good chunk of time. Uh, it's, between 1.0 and 1.1, and so we're exploring ways that we can more efficiently and quickly evolve I3C and and react to you know changes in in our key and adjacent industries and 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 applications. Um, of course, looking even more closely at how it could be a, a better tuned interconnect for automotive and and its requirements, uh, speed increases. Um, you know we've we're at a point now where you know we have a path in I3C up to effective 100 meg, close to 100 megabits per second um, throughput, all still with a 12 and a half megahertz base clock, right? So um, we, you know there there I think are still many many uh, you know speed speed increase options for for us. Uh, new uses for multi lane. So if you if you're adding multi lane. Some devices you may use it for speed, uh, those additional lanes for speed, other devices you may want to use those for other reasons. Um, it kind of a along with all of these, whether automotive requirements or new use cases, et cetera, um, you know, we, we will, this isn't a high priority, but we will consider new FI approaches. Um, uh, looking at, you know, through our liaisons, if there's, uh, you know, the, the role of connectors, if, uh, you know, 
what can we better do, um, you know, to, 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 to help uh, kind of connector based uh, uh, implementation of I3C, whether or not um, it's something we, we should standardize or, you know, it's just kind of a support role for other liaisons, et cetera, and any other future refinements. So we're reaching out to industry partners and, and form these liaisons and, and, you know, it's a good, always a good time, I think, to, to, to join. We're very interested in, uh, you know, seeing where we should take I3C next in order to meet the needs of uh, you know, new industries and usages. So if you go, um, you know, to the, to the MIPI website, um, there's, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of good stuff uh, related to I3C. I recommend checking out. Um, this is, uh, and, and this is not by, this is by no means the, the complete or exhaustive uh, list, um, but of course we have our own page. Um, there's links to specifications, a um, uh, uh, white paper, which is kind of a general introduction, FAQs, so we, we, can, we continue to revise the, the FAQs. Um, we're working on a revision right now as an example. Um, a system integrator's application note, which of course we'll, we'll keep that fresh and, and revised. There's the new automotive white paper um, to check out, driving the wires of, of automotive. And those um, you know, familiar with the MIPI specifications also, I don't include it here, but, but there are um, you know, things that you need, to, uh, you see based on the features you support, um, such as the device characteristics register, so we have, uh, you know, that registers a lot live database um, and uh, a few others that are related to um, I3C v1.1, v the mandatory data by database and uh, the bus context one as well. So those tables are there. So I think uh, this is uh, pr pretty well timed. Um, to move into the Q and A part of, of the meeting. Thanks very much, Ken. That was very interesting. Appreciate it. I do have some questions that have come in during your session. Mm -hmm. First question is I three C V one dot zero test analysis equipment to test I three C slave. Mm -hmm. That's the only portion of the question. So that came in from Ravi. I'm wondering, Ravi, if you wanted to be unmuted or to add more to that question. So, um, I mean, I'll take a I'll take a shot at it, anyways. Uh, and and I wasn't. Um, let's see. I don't. I don't want to be kind of a. A commercial for, for for the companies out there is there are there are several great companies and I don't want to leave anyone anyone out um, but there there is now a, a, a you know a spectrum of uh, t test capabilities uh, available and these companies is uh, you know, many of the companies have also participated and or support our interoperability sessions so from uh, you know uh, oscilloscopes uh you know which can act as as you know the the ideal master to to um you know test your slave as a dot to even um you know interfaces that you can uh you can just hook up hook up to a personal computer and it can be a host to your slave and you can you know write write your own test programs um to to, to test your your slave dot um there's there's plenty of um, options out there to go to, to go with. There are um, so we are also developing a, a, a test suite document to CTS um, for for I three C, and that's being developed with with the help of a few of the test equipment folks as well. So you know when that is published, you can envision a future where with the right test equipment and the right software, you can connect your DUT and and effectively hit click go and it will test your dot to our test suite um, or or defined test suite. So um, yeah, I, I guess I didn't want to name any specific companies, but if you're having trouble, uh, you know, finding them, we can, we can help connect you to offline to them. Thanks, Ken. Next question. 
Is there a plan to add the hot swap capability to I3C? Usually when slaves are added to existing bus, then pull-up and capacitance is common challenge. Sure. Um, so we currently aren't planning to do, um, you know, a, a, a electromechanical specking of, of a hot swap. So logically, um, you know, we've added um, what we call hot join. So assuming the device uh, or, or the system gets gets beyond that, um, and you know there isn't uh, large perturbation or disturbance on the bus, which causes problems. Once the device that has been connected has has powered up, has booted, or whatever it needs, whatever it needs to do, and it sees that uh, you know the bus is idle, it can make make the bus master uh, it can make itself known to the bus master and get an address assigned um but no i don't i, I don't we don't on our radar screen right now see going to the point of you know, electromechanical specking so yeah. Okay. yeah we're like halfway there but uh um, it you know you know if if that's something that uh, is needed for a specific application under a specific uh, um, you know set of requirements then then um, let's let's see if that makes sense for I3C. Thanks. Next question: What is MIPI's plan to increase the distance between master and slaves long reach? Uh, yeah. So we. Um, uh, we in in 2020 we'll be discussing uh, you know proposals to do that. Of course, uh, you know what do you mean by I increasing increasing distance? Are we talking uh, several meters, ten meters, tens of meters? Um, there uh, it is is you know debatable, but yeah, in 2020, um, you know, I, I would say historically you would consider I3C as a specified for for under a meter, certainly. Um, we are looking at, uh, you know, long, you know, longer reach beyond that. So that's a 2020 activity. It'd be great if you ever asked one to join that. <laughs> okay. Next question. Where can we get the description of the mechanism allowing the acquisition synchronization? I'm allowing the um, I'm not actually following that question. Might have to pass pass on that one. Um, if we could su submit that, so um, you can uh, submit questions to MIPI. We can uh, uh, we can try to address that one offline. Okay. Are there any MCU on the market with I3C port availability? Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm not, uh, I, I guess, I guess I, I, I'm going to punt on naming companies or products or, or any, any, anything like that. Um, I do know that, uh, if, if you follow Intel at all, Lakefield, um, was announced that this past summer net supports I3C, but I'm not going to talk about other products. I assume so. Okay. Thanks, Ken. What kind of debugging tools are available? For example, is there something like a I3C bus pirate or total phase I3C beagle? Uh, um, like is a, is, a, is a tough question. So I'm familiar, very familiar with the uh, total phase products and they hit a pretty great price point. So um there i believe yes there are devices out there um with similar capabilities whether or not you know they would hit that price point which is very affordable um is is another question but certainly there's um you know for whatever oscilloscopes you use you may find updates that you can get to allow you to do that and or and or software that can be installed there are uh you know, uh some standalone devices that that can do that. I don't just don't know if it. You know, when you say like a total phase be beagle, um, technically, uh, yes. I don't know if they you know, hit the same price points. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay. I think we have some time for a few more questions. Are you okay with that, Ken? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Is there any plan for 1.2v signaling support? So 1.2 volt. So yeah, let's actually let's talk about um, uh, let, we can talk about voltage voltages a bit. So um, you know if you if you look at v 1.0 and one and and one dot one um, right now um, you know they're clear you know clearly specified and, and understood for three three one eight and and voltages in between. Um, we do provide guidance for. Um, you know what could be, uh, you know, a, a one dot two volt uh, op operation. Um, whether it, you know, would meet your, you know, ev everyone's liking, I think, is is another question. But part of um, the collaboration and liaison with with JEDEC, um has has been um, uh, needing to uh, define. Um, operation at voltages below 1.2 volts. So I'll say stay tuned um, on that as that will, uh, you know, roll through MIPI, but from 1.0 to 1.1, um, we, we've not changed um, uh, the electricals. Um, but there is, and I, and I think I see another in the chat here, another question about even uh, point, point 0.9 volt. Um, so through the JEDEC liaison, uh, liaison um, you know, we need to need to settle on uh, lower voltage operation. So that's that's on the priority list for I through C. Okay. Could we issue sleep slash wake up command to each individual I three C slave device? Oh, so you. Um... Sleep, sleep, and wake up. So, the, so there's there's a few ways you can you can do that. So if you look at, uh, for instance, the slave slave reset capability, um, in i three cv one dot one, we we certainly, um, you know, identify the notion that that pattern can also be used to bring a device out of deep sleep. However. Um, you know, though I, I3C has, you know, standardized commands or a set of them, um, there's no reason why you can't just use private messaging to do such things um, as well. So, um, so yeah, there's, um, I, th you know, I think, multiple ways. If I want to develop a device with I3C IP, and this device can be integrated in a I2C bus or in a I3C bus? Yeah, so, um, yeah, an I3C device um, can exist on an I2C bus, but of course it'll just be an I2C device. So it'll never see the, um, it'll never see start 7E, which would, you know, signify its I3C or anything like that. So it would it would just be an I2C device. Of course, that device would would need to have or would have to have an I2C static address um, built into it. It can't uh, you know expect to uh, be given an I3C dynamic address. So it can't expect to go through dynamic address allocation or whatnot. But certainly, um, a, a, it's pretty simple to make a device that can that would exist on both. Okay. Still a question on I2C compatibility and the mandatory 50NS glitch filter. Do we know the ratio of compatible I2C chips currently compatible with I3C? Um, no. Um, I know, oh man, I, I don't recall what the number was er, early on. This is early 2012. Um, when, uh, you know, before even the working group was formed, um, when we were just a birds of feather, um, we had you know, s s every company, you know, several companies in MP members or not um, discussing exactly this, where uh, we were trying to get some kind of estimate. And we, I thought we were confident it was over three quarters 
uh, should have implemented a, a, a glitch filter, but no doubt there are still devices that just likely blew, blew completely past that requirement of I squared C. And um, you know, if there's any kind of gotcha in developing a system uh, which needs to, uh, you know, let's say you you have um, an I3C master and then a mixture of I2C slaves and I3C slaves. This is, you know, hammered home in our system integrators application note, et cetera, that you'll want to make sure they have that 50 millisecond uh, spike filter uh, implemented in those I2C devices. If you plan to run I3C at the you know, 12 and a half megahertz, else uh, you'll have to run it at uh, you know, the native data rate that the I2C slave supports. Okay. What is the I3C mechanism for recovery in case of a bus crash, say from a hot swap device or illegal bus activity? Oh, uh, let's see. I, you know, I guess it's, uh, you know, it depends on um, state, the state of the pins uh, for sure. So for instance, with slave, the slave reset capability, uh, certainly um, uh, SDA still, still needs to be able to be driven um, by, uh, uh, by the master. Um, you know, whether it's uh, a timed out, timeout kind of reset or or not if you can't if you can't budget you know budget the lines to a a, a uh uh require you know uh what do you want to call it uh whatever the you know, state you have to let's say it's sda high while scl is low for a set amount of time if you can't if you can't get to that state you're not going to be able to to reset it so um certainly there's some limit limitations in what you can do but um, hopefully we've uh, at least the, the ideas that we've evolved uh, beyond I2C. Okay. And what are the benefits of version 1.1 versus 1.0 for someone that wants to use the MIPI I3C as single master only mode? Uh, yeah, so I, you know, I think so, some of the, some of the benefits are, um, <laughs> Uh, let's see, sing, single master only. Cer certainly, uh, if you if you want want more more throughput, if you need a standardized reset mechanism, it's a good one. Um, you know, depends on the type of slaves you have, whether they you know could benefit from being grouped from an addressing uh, standpoint um, or not, or you know the device device is tunneling. So I think it really depends. It really depends on on the use case. Um, of course, um, you may simply find something like um, I'm a single master. I know all of my I3 slaves, I3C slaves that are connected, and they all, ha you know, in this system, they have fixed addresses. It's just we have a legacy of using these addresses, and and they have these addresses. Something as simple as now you have set AASA as a CCC available that the master can just broadcast out, and now everything has its address, and you don't have to go through the dynamic address process. So, I, you know, I think you'll find many, um, many things that will, that will help beyond just our improvements to, let's say, secondary mastership. Okay, and if we have time for just one more question. Um, okay, yeah, we're over, but go ahead. Okay, is there any power save modes entering slash exiting mechanism? Uh, power save. Um, so, I think, you know, power savings can come uh, from uh, many ways. I think uh, w one thing um, to, to look at is um, we've, we have a, a CCC which um, effectively allows the master to either tell a single slave or tell all the slave slaves um, how often it's going to be uh, you know, kind of pinging them on on the bus, or or going to be active on the bus. So, so, so for instance, if 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 uh, you know, it's broadcast out that um, you know, and 
I'm not going to, I'm not coming after anything for hundred microseconds. Do it, do whatever you want, power down, etc. Or maybe it's sent specifically to you. I um, mean, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, th things like that, um, that, that we've built into it. So devices can actually kind of self manage based on more information as opposed to just, you know, the master sending a specific command to go into standby or, or come out, come out of standby that can just be done through, through private messaging. Um, you know, it's debatable whether or not that kind of, uh, 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 elementary <laughs> method should be standardized, but we, I think I added, you know, some more intelligent sharing of information between the master and the slaves to let, let the slave self-manage, which is pretty cool. Again, appreciate that. Many good questions that came in. Uh, so we're three minutes over. I would say we should end our session today, but thank you, Ken, and thanks, Peter. Yeah, no problem. Okay, thanks everyone for joining us. Appreciate it. Great, thank you. Thanks. Bye bye.